Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Well, let's get started with this video series on how to rebuild, remove, rebuild, and reinstall the engine in your car. Uh, if you're doing this for the first time, or if it's your first time doing this on a specific car, uh, congratulations, it's a, it's a lot of fun to do, and it's a challenge, and it's uh, something that's very rewarding when you get it finished and you get to drive the car when you're, when you're done. So, um, before we get started, and before we get started on this car, I want to share a few things with you that you can do to help make your project or your rebuild more and more successful. Uh, the first thing that I do before I rebuild any engine, if I haven't done it before or if it's a, maybe it's a model year off from what I'm used to doing, is I'll do some research. Uh, go online and do some searches to find out some rebuild secrets, maybe some hints and tips. There could be some uh, tips on how you can remove the engine, problems people might have had getting certain things apart. So do a little research on that. Uh, on this particular engine, I was able to find uh, some rebuild tips and removal tips on this particular car, so that was helpful. Um, the other thing is, as you're doing this, have, have paper handy with a pen, take a lot of notes. As you, as you take something off, write it down and make a note. For example, um, remove the wiring harness, um, had two nuts holding the wires, and the green wire went on top. Something like that. Just make a note so you know as you put it back in order. You go from bottom to top and you put things back together. There's little notes to help you out. Also, as you're taking things apart, have a bunch of sandwich bags handy. You can get the sandwich bags and the gallon bags, whatever kind of bags you want, the freezer bags. Uh, and as you take things apart, put the bolts, nuts, fasteners, whatever, in a bag and write on there what those fasteners are for. That way, you, well, number one, you won't lose them. Number two, when you go to put it back together two or three months or two or three years later, you know what they're for. And three, that they're all together and you won't end up with extra hardware. Extra hardware is not good, so you want to make sure you keep track of all your hardware. Um, also, if you can, get the manual. Here's the motor manual uh, for this, the shop manual for this car. Studebaker shop manual 59 to 64. Uh, these are really, really helpful because they give you specifications uh, to uh, torque tolerances or to torque specs, clearances for all your engine clearances and tips on how to get things apart. So if you can get that, get, get one of those manuals. And finally, if you have a camera, your phone, whatever you have, take lots of pictures. Tons of pictures. Pictures are free, so you want to take as many pictures as possible. And when I mean as many as possible, I, I mean literally take a picture, move six inches, take another picture, move six inches, take another picture, and go all the way around your engine. And if you have video, you can take video with your phone or video uh, with a camera and a tripod like I have here. Uh, set it up and film the actual disassembly process because I have had sometimes, I, on a few occasions I can remember, going to put something back together and for some reason it, something isn't fitting right and I go back and look at my pictures and I find two pictures that were close to each other and I, and I think to myself, if I just move the camera over another three inches, I'd have a perfect picture to show me which way this gasket goes or how this wiring harness really was in there. It really, really does help. So take pictures as many as you can. You can always delete them later, but it's hard to, take, it's hard to try and remember, especially if you're doing a project like this where it might take a couple months, it might even take a whole winter, and some guys work on cars and you're restoring a car and you might have three or four or five years into the project. So it's really hard to remember and you help yourself take tons of pictures. Okay, so I think we're all set. Now if you're not rebuilding a Studebaker, you probably get some information out of this as I go along just to so see you can follow my, um, my thinking or my method, methodology that might help you. And if you're rebuilding a Studebaker, well, bonus for you, you're going to see how to do it. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by draining fluids. I'll drain the coolant. Luckily this, uh, this car has a nice petcock on the bottom of the radiator. Just open it up and drain and collect it on the bottom. Remember to be safe when you're draining your fluids. Now fortunately for this car, the only thing I'm going to have to drain is the antifreeze, coolant, and the power steering. It has power steering. So those are the only two I'm going to have to drain. I'm going to leave the oil in the engine because I want to check compression each cylinder. You've got to have some oil in there to do that, so I'm going to leave the oil in there. I'll drain the coolant and then we'll move on. Okay, while the uh, antifreeze is finishing up draining, I'm going to remove, disconnect and remove the battery. Now, before you start leaning over the car and working on it, 
putting something on the fender to make sure you don't scratch it, number one, on both fenders. Number two, do not wear a belt with a belt buckle because you will scratch it or move your belt up, belt buckle off to the side because uh, the belt buckle will scratch as you're leaning over and that's the last thing you want to do. So take care of the car, the outside of the car, as you're removing the components. That way you won't be upset when you go to put it back together and you have scratches to fix. Okay, battery out, air cleaner off, and I want to show you why pictures are really important. And here's a perfect example. We have a wiring harness here, and there's a red wire and two white wires. And this is this is a new wiring harness, so this is the way it came from the factory, but this is a, a, a new reproduction wiring harness. If you were putting this back together, you might take this red wire and put it over here where the red is and make get these mixed up. So a picture helps you understand where the wires went, number one. And number two, I take a piece of tape and just write red on there so I know that this wire right here goes to where this red sticker is. So I mark it, uh, make it clear, and now I can remove my, this is the generator, and I'm going to take that off. Okay, now I can remove my radiator hoses, my fan, move my fan off the inside, and the fan shroud. With the shroud out, it was easy to take the radiator out since they had the same four bolts. I have that out. Now I can start taking the wiring off. I'll take off the distributor, the wires, and uh, then the fuel line off the front. And um, after that I'll start to work on some of the wiring down here, the ground wiring and the rest of the hoses. At this point there's a little planning involved here because in order to take the engine out you could either A, pull the engine out with the transmission attached and pull it out as one entire unit and that's pretty possible because there's a lot of room here I could take off that front radiator support and pull the whole thing out together so that's one option. The second option is if you don't want to take the transmission out is you have to unbolt the bell housing from the engine block and you also have to take disconnect the, the clutch and or the flex plate for a automatic transmission with a torque converter or the flywheel with a clutch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath, take a look and see what's involved with pulling this whole thing out. And uh, when we do that, I, I, think, I think what we're going to end up doing here is disconnecting the drive shaft, lifting the engine up, pulling it forward, disconnecting the transmission, and disconnecting it while it's in the car. But let's go under there and take a look. All right, the easiest way to get this engine out of here is going to be this. I'll take off this radiator support so i got a straight shot out with the engine. I'm going to disconnect the exhaust manifolds on both sides so those will fall off to the side. I will disconnect the um, engine mount. There's one engine mount on each side. There's engine mounts that are in the back. I'll drop the, tr the tr um, cross member for the transmission. Disconnect the linkage to the transmission and start to lift it straight out. The yoke will come right out of the transmission with the drive shaft that will fall and I can pull the engine and the transmission out together. I will also take out the starter. So I'll do that and we'll get back to this when we uh, have the engine ready to pull out. Okay, well this ended up being the easiest way to do it. To take the intake manifold off, hook the hoist up to the intake manifold bolts, unbolt the transmission. I left the exhaust manifolds on as you can see. I just disconnected the pipe from underneath on both sides. So all I had to disconnect was the exhaust from each side, two front Engine, engine mount bolts, the transmission bolts, I uh, disconnected the linkage to the transmission, you can see right there I disconnected the linkage, uh, disconnected the um, what, uh, throttle, disconnected the transmission cable for the speedometer, and the whole thing lifted right out. So now all I have to do is clear the engine compartment and, um, and I can sit it on the ground and start to work on it. One thing to notice that if when you take the engine out, when you pull the drive shaft out, make sure you have a bucket underneath because all the transmission fluid is going to go right out the back of the transmission. So let me get this out the rest of the way and we'll start to take it apart. All right, as you can see, I have the engine and transmission out and neatly sat on the floor. If you take your time and go slow, you can do this by yourself. It, it helps if you have a friend, but I've done it so many times I know exactly what, what to do to make sure that... Uh, I don't break anything. So take your time and make sure you do it safely because this is pretty heavy. So there we have pulling the engine out. So there you have it guys. That is how you pull the engine out of your car. Now I realize every car is different. There's going to be all kinds of different things to disconnect, watch out for, take apart. But if you come up with a plan and you look at what you want to do and do it slowly and take your time, 
you'll be successful. Uh, I recommend that you have someone help you if you're doing it for the first time because it can be very, very dangerous. You're talking about an engine that probably weighs five, six hundred pounds with a transmission, you know, seven hundred pounds. So it could be very, very dangerous. So when you work on and when you're going to do this and you're going to take the engine out of your car, safety is the utmost importance. Put jack stands under your car, support it properly. Make sure it's going to be stable for you to work on. Uh, when you take, when you hook up your hoist, make sure your hoist, your chain, where you're going to bolt it to, everything is in good condition and that you're choosing the right kind of fasteners. Don't try and get away with only two screws when you can use all four. Do as, do as much as you can to be safe, to make sure you don't get hurt because all it takes is one slip and before you know it, you're going to end up hurt, maybe even killed. And it can be very, very dangerous. Don't ever put yourself between the weight or the car and the floor without proper support. Don't, when, the, when the engine is hanging on the hoist, don't get underneath there. Make sure you're lifting it up and you be as safe as possible. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go, next uh, video will be about disassembling the engine. Uh, how I want to do some testing on this. I want to test cylinder pressure. And as we take it apart, we're going to measure all the components and see what really needs to be replaced, what needs to be reworked, and analyze the engine as we're taking it apart to make sure that we uh, get the proper machining done, get the parts ordered, and start to put it back together. That will be the next video. Uh, this is Again, this is out of the 1962 Studebaker. Uh, beautiful car. It came up pretty, pretty easily. All in all, I would say it took roughly six hours or so to pull it out. That was working by myself. So it, it's not that difficult on an older car. Of course, it could take a little longer on a new car. But we'll move forward, start disassembling this engine, and get our way, uh, well on our way to getting it running and back in the car and back on the road. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.